Hi, we're putting this out on our Thorn Bottom hunting page. Um, I know you're used to seeing a pheasant hunt, seeing us blow up a bud sign, or just making some comments. So this is going to be in the comment section, I guess you could say. I'm 70 years old. I've shot my first deer when I was 13 years old on the farm I live now. The year I killed my first deer in Paulding County, there was 17. The next year they killed five in the county because they went to bucks only. Now we routinely in the past kill 1,000, 1,200, 1,400 deer. Our farm, we had 60, 80 deer that you'd see in a field. So we have, have a good population, or I should say we had a good population. Right now what we're facing in Paulding County, in Defiance County, Putman County, Williams County, a catastrophic deer die-off from EHD, hemorrhagic disease. It's caused by a noceum, a mite that bites the deer. 10 days, 15 days, they get a virus and then they're dead by their organs hemorrhaging. You find them laying in creeks, streams, ponds. It happens in extreme dry years. That's when the midges come out, so they say. Um, this year, this is our second year of drought. We have a lot of dead deer around here. And when I'm talking dead deer, I'm talking people that are finding 30, 40, 20, 10. Depends on your big farms, around rivers. They found 30 buck deer dead from the Cecil Bridge to the Antwerp Bridge in the Maumee River. I don't know how many does, but it's widespread, it's widely known, and the people that hunt or the people that are on ground around here are concerned. So they've been reaching out to the Ohio Division of Wildlife, who in their lack of knowledge or their lack of caring is just dismissing the whole problem saying just buy your hunt license and hunt like normal, the deer will come back. A catastrophic die off, they have no idea how many deer are dying. There's no drones flying over, there's no DNR cars out here doing surveys. It's left to individuals like me and the people that I know around here with our trail cameras that we live on the ground. We're saying what's happening and them and their educated wisdom just want to write us off and say we don't know what we're talking about. They have the arrogance of education where we possess the wisdom of time. And we'll, we have seen what's happening. It's catastrophic. The Division of Wildlife is going to next year say, well, gee, we didn't know. I'm making this video and putting it on my webpage or our, on our, it's not a web page, it's our YouTube channel. So next year, they're not gonna be able to say, gee, we didn't know, because I know we've called people, we've called divisions, we've called game wardens, and all of them say, buy hunt license and hunt. Buy hunt license and hunt. Well, see, what they're saying is, keep the revenue flowing. The Division of Wildlife manages deer in Ohio as a revenue resource. The Division of Wildlife should be managing white-tailed deer as a state resource, not as a bank account. So when your bank account gets depleted, there's no interest. And you're going to have no interest in hunting next year when people are out there this year buying license and not seeing anything. Oh, well, never mind the fact that we have a three-doe limit in these counties and you're going to be out there hunting and somebody that's paid 50 bucks to hunt deer or 500 is going to get down to the end. I don't know what they charge for non-resident license. It's atrocious. But when it gets down to the end, they'll shoot a little fawn. And right now we've got fawns running around with no moms because what happens with hemorrhagic disease, it kills the older deer. I think it's a lot like mumps. If you're a kid and you get mumps, you're okay, but when you're an adult and you get mumps, it can be fatal. I don't know that's the exact definition of it. I don't think there's anybody in the Division of Wildlife that knows why it's happened. They don't know any more than they did about coronavirus. Um, 
it's a sad situation. It's only going to get worse. The Division of Wildlife can't fix what's happening right now. They can mitigate what happens next year. So what I'm calling on for them is to do a little proactiveness and realize that you've got to either cancel the season in these counties or at least reduce it to bucks only. Um, I haven't seen an antler buck on my farm in three weeks. Um, I can have my daughter put some pictures of all of our trail cams of all the deer that we've had. Uh, Channel 13 came down, um, Gregory Harris, and did an in-depth interview this week. He called me out of the blue. So you've got Toledo Television that knows this is happening. I don't know about Ohio Outdoor Magazines. I think it's happening a little on Facebook, but I'm socially inept because I don't really care what those people say. I'm just happy to live out here and live my life out on my farm. But I'm doing this for my grandchildren, and I'm doing it for the people that don't have a voice. What you can do, I'll tell you what you do. You call Channel 13, go and view their video. I think you guys can download it and watch it. Listen what the official spokeswoman for the Ohio Division of Wildlife said. I really listened to her answer. And then call the game wardens in your county. Call the Ohio Division of Wildlife District Office. Call the Ohio Division of Wildlife at Columbus. Call your state rep and your state senator. You know, I live in an H2O county. This is the same county, one of the counties that f killed Lake Erie a few years back with all the algae growing in the pond. So what happens here doesn't just live here. It could have, it, I don't know if hemorrhagic disease is bad anywhere else. I've heard it's really bad around Columbus. So this is sort of a warning video and a cry to action video and just this is just, I'm just going to show you what the depressing thing about it is. This is a buck that we had on trail cam. My neighbors had pictures of him. As you can tell, this is a genetic that's been here on my farm ever since I can remember. Historically, we'll find deer with two left antlers. And here's one, two left antlers. Now, his genetics... It's probably out there, probably, but if you kill every little buck and every little doe, if you shoot off 90% of the fawns after having 90% of the adults die off, what's the odds of these genetics? This may be the last truly three-horned deer that I ever find on our farm. And it just so happened that he was found laying dead in the creek by two other bucks the first day of archery season last week. So this is the second Saturday of season. And we were just fortunate enough to find him and get a skull mount made out of him. But he very well may be that dinosaur that I can show my grandkids that he did exist. But now his genetics are no more. And maybe I'll show you the genetics of one more deer that we have on this farm. So here, I'll set this guy over here. And here, this is a set of sheds that we found right out here in our field in 2021. This is a Paulding County buck. In case you were wondering, those sheds right there, 179 and 5 eighths without the inside spread. 25 inch main beams. This is the quality of deer that we grow or the quality of deer, the genetics that we had. We had Three sets of genetics that I've seen prevalent for the 50 years that I've lived here. And I don't know what we'll have now. I don't even know if we'll have enough deer to have a season. But the Division of Wildlife, buy those licenses, keep spending that money. How many people do they think is going to hunt next year if you buy a $30 tag and $20 license? I don't even know what they cost anymore. I haven't shot a deer personally in five years. I've never shot a deer this big in my life. My wife's always killed a big deer. 
I just like to see them. Call the Division of Wildlife. Call TV and stations and newspapers. You people that are active on Facebook, hold the Division of Wildlife's feet to the fire. Because one thing government people don't like is they don't like somebody to be looking over their shoulder. And that's what you're going to have to do now. You've got to be heard. You've probably got two to three weeks to fix this. Can it be fixed? I think so. I think if you bring enough heat on them that they'll capitulate. Because if they don't, they, they're not going to be able to say in October 4th or 5th, whatever today is, of 2025, that they did not know. This is a, you are going to know. And as long, if you screw this up, as long as I'm alive, I will be reminding you about it. Because I'm too old to care if I hurt some biologist's feelings or some DEI hire's feelings. It's time that the Division of Wildlife actually has hunters and fishermen running it instead of political hires. And that's what's happened in the last two administrations. They've taken the Division of Wildlife and rolled it into the Department of Natural Resources. And this is where you're ending up. So next time you go to buy a hunting or fishing license, just think about where your money's going.